Islam. It is February the 3rd, 2019. My name is Imani Zabel Gray Bay. And first I'll be reading the Fatiha. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the Worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Master of the day requital. Thee do we serve, and thee do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou has bestowed favors, not those upon whom wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray. Right. Now I'll be continuing from where I left off of chapter 3, verse 101. Alright, section 11. Muslims exhorted to remain united O you who believe keep your duty to Allah as it ought to be kept and die not unless you are Muslims and hold fast by the covenant of Allah all together and be not disunited and remember Allah's favor to you when you were enemies then he united your hearts so by his favor you became brethren and to you who are on the brink of a pit of fire, then he saved you from it. Thus Allah makes clear to you his messages that you may be guided. And from among you there should be a party who invited to good who invite to good and enjoin the right and forbid the wrong. And these are they who are successful. And be not like those who became divided and disagreed after clear arguments had come to them. And for them is a grievous chastisement. On the day when some faces turn white and some faces turn black, then as to those whose faces are black, did you disbelieve after your dis after your belief? So taste the chastisement because you disbelieve. And as to those whose faces are white, they shall be in Allah's mercy. Therein they shall abide. These are the messages of Allah which we recite to thee with truth. And Allah desires no injustice to his creatures. And to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And to Allah are all affairs returned. Section 12, Relations of Jews and Muslims. You, you are the best nation raised up for men. You enjoin good and forbid evil. And you believe in Allah. And if the people of the book had believed, it would have been better for them. Some of them are believers, but most of them are transgressors. They will not harm you, save a slight hurt. And if they fight you, they will turn their backs to you. Then they will not be helped. A basement will be their lot, wherever they are found, except under the covenant with Allah. And the covenant with men. And they shall incur the wrath of Allah, and humiliation will be made to cling to them. This is because they disbelieved in the messages of Allah, and killed the prophets unjustly. This is because they disobeyed and exceeded the limits. They are not all alike. Of the people of the book, there is an upright party who recite Allah's messages in the night time, and they adore him. They believe in Allah in the last day, in the last day. And they enjoin good and forbid evil, and vie one with another in good deeds, and those are among the righteous. And whatever good they do, they will not be denied it. And Allah knows those who keep their duty. Those who disbelieve, neither their wealth nor their children, will avail them aught against Allah. And these are the companions of the fire, therein they abide. The likeness of that which they spend in their in the life of this world is as the likeness of wind, in which is intense cold. It smites the harvest of a people who are unjust to themselves and destroys it, and Allah wronged them, not but they wrong themselves. O you who believe, take not for intimate friends others than your own people. They spare no pains to cause you loss. They love that which distresses you. Vehement hatred has already appeared from out their mouths, and that which their hearts conceal is greater still. Indeed, we have made the messages clear to you, if you understand. Lo, 
you are they who will love them while they love you not. And you believe in the book and the whole of it. And when they meet you, they say, we believe. And when they are alone, they bite their fingertips and rage against you. Say, die in your rage. Surely Allah is knower of what is in, their, in the hearts. If good befalls you, it grieves them. And if an evil afflicts you, they rejoice at it. And if you are patient and keep your duty, their struggle will not injure you in any way. Surely Allah encompasses what they do. Section 13. The Battle of Uhud. And when thou didst go forth early in the morning from thy family to assign to the believers their positions for the battle, and Allah is hearing, knowing, when two parties from among you thought of showing cowardice, and Allah was the guardian of them both, and in Allah should the believers trust, and Allah certainly helped you at Badr when you were weak. So keep your duty to Allah that you may give thanks. When thou didst say to the believers, does it not suffice you that your Lord should help you with 3,000 angels sent down? Yeah, if you are steadfast and keep your duty, if they come upon you in a headlong manner, your Lord will assist you with 5,000 of havoc-making angels. And Allah made it only as good news for you, and that your hearts might be at ease thereby. And help comes only from Allah, the mighty, the wise. And he may cut off a part of those who disbelieve or abase them, so that they should return in failure. Thou hast no concern in the matter whether he turns to them mercifully or chastises them. Surely they are wrongdoers, and to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. He forgives whom he pleases and chastises whom he pleases, and Allah is forgiving, merciful. Islam, I'll stop there at section 14 of chapter 3, verse 130. Next, I'll be continuing in the Circle 7 Quran. Chapter 13 Jesus with Elihu in Siloam in Egypt tells the story of his journeys. Elihu, I should read the title. Chapter 13 Life and Works of Jesus in Egypt Among the Gentiles. Jesus and Elihu in Siloam in Egypt tells the story of his journeys. Elihu in Siloam prays Allah. Jesus goes to the temple in Heliopolis and is received as a pupil. And Jesus came to Egypt land, and all was well. He tarried not upon the coast. He went at once to Zoan, home of Elihu and Siloam, who five and twenty years before had taught his mother in her sacred school. And there was joy when he met these three. When last the son of Mary saw these sacred groves, he was a babe. And now a man grown strong, by buffeting of every kind, a teacher who has stirred the multitudes in many lands. And Jesus told the aged teachers all about his life, about his journeying in foreign lands, about the meeting with the masters of his kind receptions by the multitudes. Elihu and Salome heard his story with delight. They lifted up their eyes to heaven and said, Our Father God Allah, let now thy servants go in peace, for we have seen the glory of Allah. We have talked with him, the messenger of love and of the covenant of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Through him shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Through him, Emmanuel. And Jesus stayed in Zoan many days and then went forth into the city of the sun. 
that men call Heliopolis, and sought admission to the temple of the sacred brotherhood. The council of the brotherhood convened, and Jesus stood before the hierophant. He answered all questions that we asked with clearness and with power. The, hier the hierophant exclaimed, Rabboni of the Rab Rabbinite, why come you here? Your wisdom is the wisdom of the gods. Why seek for wisdom in the halls of men? And Jesus said, In every way of life I would walk, in every hall of learning I would sit. The heights of any man has gained, these I would gain. What any man has suffered, I would meet, that I may know the griefs, the disappointments, and the sore temptations of my brother men, that I may know just how to secure those in need. I pray you, brothers, let me go into your dismal crypts, and I will pass the hardest of your tests. The master said, Take then the vow of secret brotherhood. And Jesus took the vow of secret brotherhood. Again the master spoke. He said, The highest heights are gained by those who reach the greatest depths, and you shall reach the greatest depths. The guide then led the way, and in the fountain Jesus bathed. And when he had been clothed in proper garb, he stood again before the hierophant. Islam. That was chapter 13 of the Circle 7. I'll once again be reading um, Public Law 97 280, October 4th, 1982. Joint resolution authorizing and requesting the president to proclaim 1983 as the year of the Bible. Whereas the Bible, the word of God, has made a unique contribution in shaping the United States as a distinctive and blessed nation and people, whereas deeply held religious convictions springing from the holy scriptures led to the early settlement of our nation, whereas biblical teachings inspired concepts of civil government that are contained in our Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, whereas many of our great national leaders, among them Presidents Washington, Jackson, Lincoln, and Wilson, paid tribute to the surpassing influence of the Bible in our country's development. As in the words of President Jackson, that the Bible is the rock on which our republic rests. Whereas the history of our nation clearly illustrates the value of voluntarily applying the teachings of the scriptures in the lives of individuals, families, and societies. Whereas this nation now faces great challenges that will test this nation as it has never been tested before. And whereas that renewing our knowledge of and faith in God through Holy Scripture can strengthen us as a nation and a people now therefore be it resolved by the senate and house of representatives of the united states of america and congress assembled that the president is authorized and requested to designate 1983 as a national year of the, as a national year of the bible in recognition of both the formative influence the bible has been for our nation and our national need to study and apply the teachings of the holy scriptures this was approved october 4th 1982 Alright, this long, I will be reading the Bible in part 2.